using iCloud. Now, iCloud is the system where your uh, Apple services tend to get stored um, in the cloud, much the same as Google in the cloud and uh, OneDrive and your Microsoft 365 stuff in the cloud. Um, and usually this is something which gets overlooked by people that don't necessarily have Apple devices. Uh, and they'll say that you can only use pages and numbers and Keynote, etc., on an Apple device, which isn't strictly true because you can actually access all of these programs in the same way as you do uh, on an Apple device through the web browser. So we just thought I'd take a look at how you can do some of these things because obviously it unlocks some of the creativity, some of the opportunities that you can have if working with students that might want to do something a little bit different or utilize some of the other programs, some of the videos that I've made that show what you can do in some of these other applications. So I've just gone into iCloud.com and the only thing I've had to do is sign in with an Apple ID. Now an Apple ID is free. Uh, people have these if you've got an Apple uh, device, you'll, you'll use an Apple ID in order to download applications, but you can have an Apple ID anyway. You know, there's no uh, nothing stopping people from creating Apple IDs. And in fact, in a school situation, you can have what is called a managed Apple ID, which adds different layers of security to it, obviously from a, a control point of view from the school. Um, and these could be created for all of your students. And, and there's a whole other thing that you could look at um, in terms of how to distribute those uh, Apple IDs to your students. And in fact, with managed federated accounts, you can actually use, in most cases, if you've got a, a, a Windows Microsoft setup, you can use those as federated accounts to create Apple IDs. But that's a, a whole other thing that we can look at. Just wanted to have a look at basically the access you have to all of these things. Now, in my situation here, you'll see that there's all of these range of Apple apps that I can access now. Although I am on an Apple device at the moment, this is accessed, like I said, through the web browser, www.icloud.com. And now I have access to all of these programs. So we've done lots of videos around how to use pages. You can see now I can jump into pages. Uh, I obviously have an Apple account, so I have lots of these. Um, but if I didn't, I could start from scratch and I can do this, this creation within uh, within the web browser. So I still have access to all of these different templates. Once I'm in the template, so if we, uh, for example, look at the book creation, we can create one of these. I'm gonna go into it, you'll see it's a very similar setup to if you've used uh, Apple Pages within the desktop as opposed to the app, but the icons are all pretty much the same. If I want to add anything, I tap on the plus, I can put graphs in and charts, etc. add text boxes, all of those shapes that I'm used to using are all here, you can still use these, and you can add in media as well in terms of an image um, or your image gallery. And then if you were to edit anything, tapping on the, uh, the um, spanner here gives me the option to be able to have additional formatting uh, options and obviously format over here using the paintbrush. Similar again, in, in the iPad version, you'll have the plus and the paintbrush. Same thing here, paintbrush, but you just get the options appear down the side. So if I tap on the text, for example, I'll have all of those options, the same as I'm used to seeing. So if you need to check out how to use pages, I've got the iPad videos about how to do this. You can just translate a lot of that information onto using this through iCloud. Similarly then, if I go back, go back to my cloud, I can go into Keynote, and no surprises, you're gonna see exactly the same kind of setup here again, all of the, the screens look the same, just it's, I know I'm in Keynote because it's blue, Pages was in uh, the orange color. If I tap on the plus again, it's gonna take me into the template chooser page, all of those templates are there, same as the ones that I can use um, off my iPad. I can go into any of these, tap create, and again, I'm gonna be able to do the same things. And again, once you know what the buttons do at the top, it works the same across different platforms. There might just be some additional ones. Um, in this case, obviously it's a presentation tool, so I have the play icon here. But we still have those format tools, so I can format the text, format the arrangements, etc. I can still add in those different elements, I still have those shapes. Um, so really, really quick and easy way to add and edit information. And again, watch the Keynote videos for ideas on how you can use Keynote um, in different ways. And then finally, if I go back, we can also do the same with numbers. So again, no surprises, I'll load it up just so people can see. Create a new, it's gonna give me the templates. Again, I can choose any of these templates. Let's choose this for an example. Jump into create. 
and it's just going to load up that familiar view now with the icons across the top here giving me those options to add different elements formatting down the side here and then you know because this is a spreadsheet there's an additional tool for being able to add those different sheets across the top now the other thing which is useful here to know is because I'm in iCloud I also have access to the other tools as well so I have access to my whole iCloud Drive so all of the files etc that I've got stored somewhere I can also access notes so there are whole videos around how to use notes I'll jump into this for a second obviously using an iPad you have those drawing tools we can still add in checklists etc we can still add in tables and charts um, and if you've seen any of the videos that I've created around using this as a whiteboard I can still access all of those whiteboards as well so it might not be from a point of view of actually doing the demonstration but I could share that whiteboard with the students they could see the outcome etc um, so just different ways of working but I think it's useful to see that you don't necessarily have to have an Apple device in order to access some of the creative Apple applications that exist um, and certainly in a remote learning world that we're in at the moment or a teaching world sorry that we're in at the moment those opportunities for students to be able to utilize a range of tools may be extremely useful for them. So there we go, quick and easy way to just get going with iCloud.com. And again, if you want any more details around any of the individual apps and their uses, jump into some of the playlists to check those out as well.